Hi, I'm Nate, and you're watching Photo Learningism. Let's get into the floating apple effect and see how it's done. There is no green screen involved with this effect. You can do this simply with really low budget and just a little bit of patience. I suspended an apple with a string, just something that was colored so it was easy for me to see and work on. I would recommend something a little less stringy. That kind of got in my way a little bit. I used yarn, uh, but yeah, any kind of string, anything that can sustain the weight of what you're suspending is fine. In this particular circumstance, what I did is I planned my angle very, very carefully just to see that I have fixed a piece of really scotch tape here, which you can just barely see here peeking out over the string, but otherwise it's hidden the way the apple spins, so you never really see it. So that's part one. What's happening here in order to eliminate it is there's a few layers. You have this starting layer where I'm working with it. I have the suspended object, and then behind it, you have what's called the clean slate, which is the same shot without the object. So what I did is I first videoed what I was doing and then I just simply pulled it out of view and videoed this next piece. And nothing really changes in this particular shot, so you can replicate that as you need to or adjust the speed because again, nothing's really changing. That would give it away that it's just that. In fact, you could even just use a still image if you really wanted to, as long as it matches the resolution and quality of all these. There are a few caveats of how you do that though in that when you video this, you need to make sure you set your camera to lock its settings, your white balance, your exposure, so that when you change the conditions of the shot, it does not automatically try to compensate. It handles it differently when there's an object right here because light needs to be exposed to a certain level to show this versus what's in the background. And if you like Caden Live and you want to find out about best practice configuration and getting your feet underneath you for starting for using that tool, I do have a book available for $5 out there as an ebook. It's called Every Tool You Need for Content Creation for Free. And of course includes way more than just Caden Live. It includes a whole repertoire of tools you can use to get started in content creation. But the hard facts of setting up Caden Live are all there. Go check it out. Again, it's $4.99, $5 US. And I really appreciate you taking a look. Thank you so much. You need to use just a simple effect. This is really actually not that complicated. We're gonna use the rotoscoping effect, which drags on. And then from here, we just need to make a whole lot of keyframes. So the way a rotoscope filter works is that you drag it on and then you set your initial points of the mask, that's what it really is. And then you hide away everything you don't want seen. In our case, this is the string. You have to click to add your points and your right click is your final point. So what that would look like, and I don't have to be exact here because I can always adjust them, is I can click with my left mouse button a few times here, kind of approximate how many points I think I'm going to need. And my last one to close the object has to be a right click. That's really the only caveat. So you'll see how here, I only have the string, which is not what we want. So we want to make sure we invert down here in this checkbox. That reverses it so that we're actually eliminating the string. Now, and again, this only works because I've put the blank slate behind it. Otherwise, you'll just see black. You have to put that layer underneath uh, to make sure that this, this completes the, the effect. I would recommend stepping up the feathering to maybe about three. What feathering is, if you're unfamiliar with it, is it is a means of somewhat blending the edge a little bit. It makes it less sharp, which there are conditions where you'd want that really sharp, but for what we're doing, we want it to blend very cleanly over what you're doing. The number of passes are the number of iterations that it's going to enact that feathering. So again, I'd recommend about three for each of those and you're good to go. All right, so from here, really, it's just a matter of modifying the object to match the movement. Um, I did this every couple of frames and that did very well. It will attempt to animate the difference, but it's not always gonna get it 100% right because it's not able to predict your movement 100%. So I'm gonna create a new keyframe down here and I could move the whole shape. If it stays somewhat the same, that's fine too. And then just drag the points off. Uh, I can also use the mouse roller with the control button just to kind of get in close and move this into position so I can see it really, really well. 
Also, when I'm adjusting points, you have the Bezier curves, which as you kind of hover and click onto it, you can see how I can make these even more refined just to make sure that I get around this object as accurately as possible. That is really the principle of this, where you just need to make sure that you keep the object on pace and adjust the points with what you do. That is just done as often as need be with animating the tweens, the, the, the keyframes between. And when you're done, you can get something like this. That's it. It's just a simple mechanism of taking out the parts you need, planning the shot carefully so you don't reveal too much of what's going on. You could shoot more of it, but then you have to remove more of it and plan more of it. And it's a little more complex to get around that. So it's just better to shoot it creatively and then mask it out like I'm doing here. This is the simplest way to get it done with no green screen. I hope that's helpful. If that's interesting to you, please give me a thumbs up. Also subscribe if you haven't done that already. And also leave a comment, ask a question, and I'll do my best to point you in the right direction. I hope to see you at the next video. I wish you a very happy holiday season with you and your family. I love y'all. I'll see you at the next video.